Right. So. Hello everyone who will come in to see the playback. I am going to be reacting to the 2020 guide of how to be a better vegan. Uh, spoiler alert, it sucks. It like actually sucks. So <laughs> um, if you have not seen it, I found it through David Rams's channel. He reacted to it and I just watched it in absolute horror. Uh, so we're going to find out today, you know, how to be a better vegan. I'm always looking for ways to improve as a human being, generally, and I'm a vegan. So, uh, <laughs> should we find out how we can all improve, um, as vegans? You ready for it? Okay. First... First, in order to uh, be a good vegan, my dudes, uh, you have to stop talking about it. <laughs> oh, this is right. I'm gonna just take a sip of water because this is going off to a great start. So let me get this straight. To be a good vegan, you just have to just not talk about it. <laughs> you know the joke. How do you know if someone's vegan? Don't worry, they'll tell you. Don't be that kind of vegan. Try instead a don't ask, don't tell policy. <laughs> so, you can only, to be a good vegan, you can only talk about it if someone else brings it up. Um, but I assume that even if it's brought up, because typically it's other people bringing it up, um, typically if they bring it up, I'm guessing this person thinks you best shut up about it really quickly. Like, yeah, you can talk about it, but not for too long. You know, otherwise uh, you're going to start annoying people. You're going to start agitating people. So the best thing to do in the situation, uh, <laughs> just don't tell anyone. Just keep it to yourself. So this is already giving me various health conditions. Um, I don't know about you, but if you adopt any ethical stance and you think that the alternative, the norm, is harmful, uh, I don't know what's so wrong about you know, talking about the fact that you think these things are wrong. Like, how does... Tell me how it follows that you are a bad vegan if you talk about veganism. How does that make sense? <sighs> Just nonsense already. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be triggered the entire way through. So. <laughs> Switch for the right reasons. Okay. So. When I decided to cut out meat, dairy, even honey from my diet. Even honey. God, even honey. You. Oh, even. Honey's in everything, so. Uh, in 2010, my friend said, ah, a healthy choice as a compliment, says entrepreneur Jatin Patel. The widespread misconception is that veganism is a wellness movement. It's more of a political, ethical set of decisions. The term vegan was coined in 1944 for vegetarians who stopped consuming animal-derived products as a response to cruel, industrialised farm and dairy practices. It's about minimising the burden or loss of other lives in your life, it's not a shortcut or a weight loss or muscle gain, Patel says. Now, this is the only bit of the entire article that I think is actually all right. And you know what? It's because the author's quoting somebody else. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, yeah, it, after that, it's not going to. There you go. That's, that's the only bit that's good. I'm warning you. Uh, it's going to get worse, all right? What, what are you saying? I'll quickly check. Uh, the first rule of vegan club broken. People tell us to shut up, but what they don't realise is there are actually lives at stake if we don't talk. Exactly. It's not just this kind of nice thing that, like, oh, um, I don't know, as benign as using one type of flower over the other. 
it's like no actually there are effects to being quiet about this like <laughs> what on earth how do you know if someone eats meat they'll talk about the bloody steak they had for dinner and the blt they're having for lunch the day then and then go on about thanksgiving turkey yep yep gotta put it in there so we seem fair <laughs> admit that vegan food can be unhealthy too who's right like what actual bozo is asserting that vegan junk food is good for you like who is it can you tell me who because i i need to just have a little word with them <laughs> who is who is it who is saying oh you know these burgers that you can get like these beyond burgers uh, did you hear about this like pasty you can buy? Did you hear about these mince pies, guys? These vegan mince pies. Yeah, the the secret about them is that they're healthy. What? Right. Let's have a look. Redeemer Saxena. I've probably butchered that, which is ironic because I'm vegan and I'm sorry. A corporate finance editor grew up in a household that relished everything. A series of health issues seven years ago caused her to cut out meat, dairy and gluten. But the vegan diet wasn't necessarily healthy, she recalls. A lot of this is processed. It's high in soy and tofu, which can interfere with hormones. According to what research, please? Citation needed? Anything? No. No. <laughs> oh my god. With the new mock meats, I don't know what I'm eating. And we don't... Well, then look at the back of the label. If you don't know what you're eating, look at the ingredients. <laughs> oh, right. And I don't know their long-term repercussions. Then, like, actually look up rather than just going by hearsay, which you've clearly done when it comes to soy. You're like, oh, it can interfere with... Right. What I've seen that suggests interference with hormones you have to be in copious inhuman amounts of soy before that can even be the case so just crikey I've got, like oh my god what, what why is this a big how does this make you a good vegan to just admit something that you're not even like denying in the first place like who's <laughs> denying this are any of you fibbing are any of you telling your, your mates, oh, um, freaking, like, yeah, it's all healthy. Yeah. All this processed stuff, you know, all them crisps you can get. Yeah. It's, it's, it's healthy. If, as long as it's vegan, then you're, you're going to be fine. <sighs> yeah. But Fiona, while you're a connoisseur of vegan junk food, are you admitting it's junk? Really? Otherwise you're not a good vegan. <laughs> <laughs> oh god I don't know what I'm eating and we don't know their long term repercussions nothing is healthier just because it's vegan think of french fri fries and beer yes yes check your privilege Patel tends to stay away from what he calls pulpit vegans they're mostly showing off that they can afford to be picky who <laughs> what he says a lot of vegan alternatives nut milks dairy-free cheeses fish, fish substitutes cost more and have a higher carbon footprint when you factor it in packaging and imports again citation no there's nothing there there's oh am i supposed to just trust patel i'm just yep yeah, you yeah you're right yeah you actually these are more harmful for the environment according show me <laughs> oh my god um as well as that like when i look at the alternatives there are some that are quite expensive and there are some that are incredibly affordable just like if you went to the you know corpse section and found all the different uh you know bits of flesh that you can find you're gonna find really cheap cuts you're gonna find really expensive expensive cuts like what is this nonsense Oh, they're just showing off that they can afford to be picky. Who? Like, what vegans are you hanging out with? It sounds like this was written by, like, 
um, people who are quite upper class and that they're in the kind of upper echelons, you know, with their fancy friends who are all plant based and they're all eating like um, really expensive quinoa, almond butters and stuff like that. Like, not me. Like, most of us are just random people who don't have all that much money and we just care about animals. Yeah? How do I be a better vegan then? Uh, apparently so far, you can't talk about veganism only if someone asks about it. Um, you have to admit that it's un it can be unhealthy. Um, and... <laughs> like, okay... Yeah, I don't think anyone's denying that you... In fact, I would rather people knew that. I would much rather people knew, oh, you know, this can be unhealthy, because then they might wrap their head around the fact that we can eat loads of different things. You know, it's not just... Like, we can't win, either. So, what do you mean? Or, yeah, but, like, vegan junk's bad for you. <sighs> oh... We got salad in the chat. I basically live off pasta. Well, no, you're just showing off that you can afford to be picky, Faith. That's what you're doing. It's going to get busy. Vegan bloggers are inspirational until you realise that's all they do. And it's impossible to think about what I to eat every meal every day, says Saxena. It's worse when I'm travelling. In parts of Asia, they just don't understand the concept. What is this nonsense? <laughs> it, again, it's like all about... It's weird how this author talks about how you should um, focus on... Um, oh, sorry, I'll turn that down. You should focus on what it actually means to be like vegan. Like, you know, do it for the right reasons. But then... I'm guaranteeing that when they're talking about vegan bloggers, they're talking about people who make all these fancy plant-based meals. They're not talking about vegan activists, you know, or people who make it their full-time lifestyle job to talk about veganism. I bet I can guarantee they're talking about, you know, those people who make all these intricate meals and that is their, like, full-time job. Like, why are you going... Oh, I have a full-time job. Yeah, like, so do they, and that's their full-time job. Like, they have more time to make intricate meals to for people who like, you know, watching these things, consuming this content, they want inspiration. Like, what does this, what does this mean? Like, happy cow and PB sandwiches aren't things. No, no, you know, when you're uh, travelling, you cannot, suddenly, you cannot, like, find out where you could eat. You're just, you're at the the complete mercy of, I don't know, the compass. <laughs> like, you've got no control uh, at all. As soon as you start moving in a certain direction, you, ca you can't pick vegan things. It's very difficult then. Like, <sighs> I've got, of course, like, I don't have time. I don't allocate time in my life, really, to sort out meals properly. I'll, like, bulk cook. Uh, when I have time and and you know I'll just eat crap when I don't have time like I don't make time for it busy full-time lives mean that you don't typically have time for food but I don't know how this is what why is this a, why is this a thing if you have a full-time job you're going to struggle sometimes to sort out your time management when it comes to food like this is supposed to be teaching us how to be better vegans What? This is nonsense. I, I, I would, I'd burn this. <laughs> if, if this was given to me and I were like uh, in charge, I would burn it. I'd be like, oh, oh, could you do me a favor? Could you print this out for me? Be like, oh, um, yeah, all right. And I'd just burn it <laughs> right in front of them. I'd burn it. So here we go. We're about to have fun with this one. So be an imperfect vegan. Where well, I struggle with this trope, considering I don't know how you can be a perfect or imperfect thing that is either a thing or it's not. 
Like, either you are vegan or you're not. Either you avoid animal products where possible and practicable and it's part of your lifestyle, or you don't and you're not. So I don't know where this imperfect vegan nonsense comes from. The term is getting popular among vegans who've struggled with an all or nothing version of the lifestyle. It allows flexibility and a chance to do better in bits. Veganuary observed since 2014 it's a way to start the year as a vegan. Meat-free Mondays are easier to manage than a week of struggling over every meal. <laughs> so are you telling me that someone could call themselves an imperfect vegan if they do meat-free Mondays? Is that what you mean? It just it does not compute when you when you go through what the term vegan means. Like it just is an absolute nonsense to assert you can either be an imperfect version of that or not like you literally either avoid animal products where possible and practicable or you don't i don't know why this is difficult so basically the guide to being a better vegan in 2020 is to not be vegan it is it is the um hindustan times vegan king um yeah so <laughs> this is a guide aimed at vegans and it's not even talking to them it's talking to flexitarians reducitarians sometimes vegetarians like i <laughs> I, don't, I don't know like what on earth i want you to look me in the eyes and tell me if you do meatless mondays you are any amount big i just don't We'll go through at the end, right? Because I, I want your ideas. And for the people watching the playback, please leave a comment down below. And even if you're in the live stream watching this, leave a comment down below of how you think we could be better vegans. But for God's sake, this is terrible. And this isn't even aimed at vegans. Like, <laughs> But we will go through, you know, ways that you can be a better vegan. Because I think there are ways. Possibly. Um, am I one to talk? Probably not. But we can go through them. But this ain't the one. So. Talk to a doctor. Malnourishment is common among vegans. For many, a strict plant-only diet does more harm than good. Malnourish. <laughs> Malnourishment is common among the... Like, how have you compiled that data? Like, how do you know that it's a common thing among vegans specifically? How can you single them out and be like, oh yeah, it is common among... Where have you, where have you learnt that? Or is that just an assumption you've made and then written it down? And then thought, hmm, people don't really like vegans, so they're not really going to question this anyway. For many, a strict plant-only diet does more harm than good. Succina's health concerns abated only after a doctor prescribed the occasional fish or egg meal and advised her to give up lentils. <laughs> right, what were those health concerns? <laughs> prescribe you. I prescribe you an egg. Oh, yeah. What? What's, what's in a magical egg, then? What's in a magical... Like, if anything, it'd probably be an Amiga problem, or, like, a calorie, calorie problem, where, like, they're not eating enough calories, so they're not getting much protein or something. So adding something more calorific, maybe. Patel now focuses not on vegan or not vegan, but on an effort, but on the effort the world and he have put into a meal. So, <laughs> Saxena was referenced elsewhere. Look, hang on. Yeah, so this person, the entire way through, they've got um, Saxena and Patel, and they're, the, they're two people who are featured in this, right? And Saxena's not vegan. So why on earth are we being told by non-vegans how to be better vegans? What's... Is this just, like... I cannot believe this nonsense. 
So as Saxena puts, just do what you can without it taking over your life and everyone else's. The irony in that is that if you don't go vegan, if you don't cut animal products out of your life, then you are participating in a lifestyle that promotes literally taking over the lives of others. That's the irony of it. There's... <laughs> I don't understand, um, right, what this... This is... That's, that's the article, by the way. That is, that's the... That is the nonsense article. This is Indian logic, <laughs> vegan king. Oh, okay, is it? Uh, vegan king is in India. And uh, tells me some stories. Egg cures what ails you. Okay, I see. This, I rate this a zero out of ten. Like, a zero. I would have given it one, but I don't have it in me. So it's going to have to be a zero, I'm afraid. A, a, a big old fat zero. Uh, because it is called the 2020 guide, how to be a vet, better vegan, right? So this is the guide. The 2020 guide, the guide of this year. No meat, no dairy, no honey, no silk, no wool or leather even. Are those choices really better for the planet or your health? And do things need to be that extreme? So they've got this, um, I forget what you call it. I shouldn't forget what you call it, but like a prelude, all right, to what, the sorts of things that are going to be explored in this article and there's no real mention of you know things like leather things that are non-edible animal products that's not gone through in this article and do things really need to be that extreme well you haven't you haven't told me yes or no you've just featured a random reducitarian who says oh well you don't want it taking over your life you know full time you know, we haven't really got all that time to, you know, think of all the meals I'm going to have for the week. Like, really? What? It oh, my God. Like, it takes more effort to actually just come up with nonsense. It really just takes more effort to be like, oh, well, I'm, I need to write an article so I feel a bit better about this situation. So... Yeah, I just am sick to death of non-vegans telling us uh, what we should uh, be doing to begin with. Because it's like, well, if you uh, think this is an important topic, you think it's important that veganism is implemented enough to involve yourself, then what are you playing at? Unless you have a really, really freaking good excuse. Um, especially when it's this nonchalant nonsense that people have where they're like, Oh, well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, you know, your convenience first. It's like, you've just told me to go vegan for the right reasons. Which are minimising the burden or loss of other lives um, in your life. So this Patel person gets it, and then this person, Saxena, comes in. And it's like, are you, did, did anyone listen to that bit? No. Like, it's kind of important, don't you think? Like, we've just, we've just gone through, oh, you know, cruel industrialised and farm and dairy practices that affect the life of other, lives of others. And it's like, well, actually, yeah, it probably does need to be that extreme where you follow it through and you, you know, be vegan. Oh, wow, she posted this nonsense on my birthday. Oh, Firefly, I'm sorry. Happy birthday. I, no wonder I hate birthday. Well, I didn't celebrate my birthday this year, so I'm yet to have one. Um, 
I want to debate the moron who wrote this. Her name is Rachel Lopez. And she works for Hindustan Times. But we can go through, you know, quickly. Um, how to be a better vegan in 2020. Like, how do you think we should be better vegans? Because I, I have some ideas. But I'm not the... Um, you know, I'm not the epitome of, you know, I don't, I don't know if my perspective is very good, but I have some ideas. Do you? <laughs> oh my God, who are you? Um, I think in order to be a be better vegan in 2020, we're going to have to just up the ante, to be honest with you to uh, take the importance of the subject and actually keep our standards high. I mean, I think they're bare minimum, to be honest with you. But I, I don't think that making excuses or acting like this isn't an important topic or wave, waving our conviction to uh, suit people's comfort I don't think those things will get us the respect that we need as a movement, uh, the respect that the message needs. And I don't think that it's respectful to the victims. So I think actually something that we can do is ha be better versed in the argumentation, better versed in the philosophy. And, you know, there is there's a polite way to say a lot of unpolite things so you know learning how to relay a message uh that's hard hitting it's not comfortable but do so in a really effective way uh i think that would be a good way to be better i think another way to be better would to be to better support smaller vegan exclusive companies where possible uh, I think especially after I'm just seeing all these vegan places cut, uh, shutting down and stuff. It's really sad to see. So it's made me think, oh, well, all these, um, you know, companies are bringing out a vegan brand of things now in a lot of places. So where possible still, I think it's important to buy those exclusively under, you know, grassroots vegan brands, even if they're, you know, like 20p more expensive or something like that. Um, more memes. <laughs> you think more memes? I've, I've got a meme video coming out. Um, let's see. We try our best, we help each other make better choices and we don't listen to these idiots. Yeah, I think a really good th way to be a better vegan is just not to actually take twits like this seriously because this is ridiculous. Uh, are there any you'd recommend? Any what? Sorry. Associating veganism with pos poverty should not be a thing. I mean, not when it's available to kind of any real class... Um, any, any class really, like if you, if you are poor, then you can still probably make it work. I know that people, uh, in the UK, um, when you start implementing, factoring in, you know, certain allergens and everything like that, but say, um, someone's just like me, they don't have any specific allergies or intolerances. They have foods that don't agree with them too much, but nothing, you know, that will kill them or really hurt them. Um, but, you know, so they can really eat anything. Um, you know, if they're like me, I know for a fact that they can make veganism work on a very, very low budget. It's very workable. So, you know, and if you're really rich, of course you can make it work. You can make anything work if you're bloody rich. Um, I spend less as a vegan than before. I do, but I think it's probably because it then means I can't buy everything. <laughs> so, but yeah. Surely hydrating a spider and helping snails across the road every day is the best way to be vegan. 
Oh my god, who said that? Was that... Sounds like something Tim Sheaf said. I'm remembering it. I th I'm feeling like it is. Now I just need to double check something. Because if Michelle Lowe is going live, then I best not stay on too long. I swear she's going live. Um, she, yeah, she is in six minutes. Okay, so I got six minutes. Oh, six minutes. So. Any comments you want to bring in, let me know. But I, I just want to say that I think there are ways to be a better vegan. But this is not, this is a weird article. I don't know the, the purpose of it, really. Because if anything, it's trying to say, oh, well, the best way to be a, a better vegan in 2020 is to not be one. <laughs> Which, which is um, unreal. And I think there are many ways to be better, better vegans. And that would be educating ourselves a lot better. I'd say advocating more where possible. Uh, what happens in six minutes? Uh, Michelle Lowe's stream. So I don't want to overlap it with hers. I do try to make sure that my stuff doesn't interfere with other people's. The only way to please Omnis is to coddle them. Yeah, it literally, this is what it is. It's I, I think this was written by, you know, a, a meat eater. I, I don't know Rachel Lopez. I don't know whether or not she is vegan. But my inclination is that she's not. And that she's trying to, you know, kind of work in this idea that we're supposed to pander to non-vegans, non we're supposed to make them feel comfortable, we don't want them feeling any sort of discomfort on our behalf, you know, all this nonsense. And it's like, it gets to a point where it's like, I'd rather not make people feel comfortable, don't get me wrong, I don't, you know, I'd rather the experiences that people have, you know, due to my existence are positive ones, but at the same time, if they are doing something harmful to another being, it's like, well, wh what do you want from me? Like, <laughs> like of course we, we're going to have these um, uncomfortable discussions. Of course we're going to uh, you know, want to talk about this because it's really important. And if that makes you uncomfortable, then as much as I personally don't like that I'm making someone uncomfortable, also good. Because this is, is an uncomfortable topic. It's uncomfortable to be harming other sentient beings. Of course. So, yeah. It sucks. It sucks. And I rate it 0 out of 10. Swainy. The purpose of this article is to piss people off. I think it is. And you know what? It worked. Because I am... Trigger. Nice. Most success I've had is someone telling me that my cakes are nicer than regular cakes. I love it when that happens. Oh, we got Yeet a fix in the chat. <laughs> oh, my dude. I love your name. Random, but vegan mince pies are so good. It's not really random when I have them right here. They want to see animal products on their plates, but never want to know how they're made. No, they don't. Uh, and if they do, then uh, they're considered weird, even by people who <laughs> consume those very products. That's the whole thing. They're naive and ignorant. Veganism must be part of the human future for us to advance as a species. I mean, according to that lady who went against Earthling Ed, we will, de we will devolve in 20 years. Human evolution... <laughs> It doesn't happen like other evolution happens. It happens at an exponentially quicker rate. Um, <laughs> in 20 years, man shall devolve because of veganism. You heard it here first, folks. There's a saying, two things you don't want to see made, laws and sausages. <laughs> That's a funny saying, I like that. <laughs> 
Right, I got two minutes before Michelle starts. So you want to say anything, you want to do anything, speak now or forever hold your peace until the next time I'm streaming, which <laughs> I don't know when that is. Um, probably soon. Yeah, it's time for some devolution. Yeah, I think we've come too far as a species. We're just too, we're too good. So <laughs> now we just need to um, just stop. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh my god. Um, sorry, let me just double check something. Have I got that on a really bad setting or does that look like that? Okay, that's fine. I don't want to see laws being made though. I want to be in the room where it happens. <laughs> I do want to see laws being made. I do. Great stream there. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to cut this down so that it's actually just like a video. Um, because I've been editing and it just takes so long and I've had it off. <laughs> A reminder to anyone that I have